On today's Exploring History podcast, I'll share an amazing story of faith, courage, selfless service, and answered prayer. Welcome to Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. Kent Brantley grew up in a Christian home in Indianapolis and attended Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas. He then enrolled in Indiana University School of Medicine to become a physician. Early on, he decided to devote his life to medical missions. In 2006, Kent married Amber Carroll, whom he had met at Abilene. Amber has a degree in nursing. The couple has two children. In 2013, the Brantleys moved to Monrovia, Liberia, for Kent to work in a mission hospital through Samaritan's Purse, a relief agency headed by Franklin Graham. The hospital was soon swamped with patients who had become ill during the world's worst outbreak of the Ebola disease. Ebola is a virus. The disease got its name from the first outbreak, which occurred in 1976, in the region of the Ebola River in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Ebola is highly contagious and very deadly. Throughout the epidemics that have occurred from time to time, the average fatality rate has been 50%. In some outbreaks, the death rate reached 90%. There was no known cure. Thousands of people died across West Africa during that outbreak. Monrovia, a city of one million, was especially hard hit as the disease spread among people who lived close together. Teaching the citizens there preventative practices took time, and medical personnel had to overcome the Liberians' suspicions about the disease. Some thought the disease was just a myth. Militant groups in Liberia attacked some clinics because they thought that their opponents were operating them and were trying to kill them off. Some thought foreigners were trying to profit from the disease by operating the clinics. A significant number of victims simply feared going to clinics, and the victims' continued presence in their communities spread the disease rapidly. Ebola victims suffer greatly from fluid loss, which makes children's little bodies especially vulnerable. Young patients with Ebola have a much higher death rate. Children are also victims of the disease in another way. When their parents contract the disease and are either in treatment or pass away, the children need care from family or other willing volunteers. Dr. Brantley was placed in charge of the hospital's Ebola unit. All medical personnel who treated Ebola patients wore protective equipment from head to toe. All that a patient saw were the caregiver's eyes through the goggles he or she was wearing. It took about 20 minutes for a staff person to get suited up to see a patient. In the African heat, the healthcare workers were only supposed to stay suited up for an hour at a time, as the temperature inside the suit could reach over 110 degrees. However, many workers tended patients for hours at a time. Of the several Ebola patients Brantley treated, only one survived. In the summer of 2014, Amber and the children returned to the United States to attend a family wedding. The trip had been scheduled a long time in advance. Kent was supposed to travel to the U.S. separately a few days later. On July 24th, a few days after his family left, Brantley became seriously ill. Tests indicated that he had contracted Ebola. About the same time, another worker at the hospital, clinical nurse assistant Nancy Wrightbowl, also came down with the disease. These two healthcare workers became deathly ill. While medical personnel from the hospital cared for Brantley and Wrightbowl, Samaritan's Purse Ministry began working furiously to evacuate the two patients back to the U.S., They contacted the U.S. State Department. They contacted other countries also, as well as private agencies, in an effort to work out an evacuation plan. However, 
Flying highly contagious patients was risky business, and several countries expressed reluctance at receiving such a plane. Nancy's husband worked at the hospital in Liberia, and he was able to help care for her. Amber Brantley, back in the U.S., wondered if she would ever see her husband again. Meanwhile, as news spread about Brantley and Wright Bowl, millions of people around the world started praying. Samaritan's Purse located a plane that was designed to transport one seriously ill patient at a time. About the same time, the hospital gained access to the experimental drug ZMAP. Though the drug had been tested on monkeys, no human had ever received a dose of it. Protocol called for three doses of ZMAP to be administered to a patient. In all of Liberia, there was only one course of three doses. In late July, the special jet left the United States to travel to Liberia to transport Brantley and then Wright Bowl to the U.S. for treatment. However, the jet experienced pressurization problems and had to turn back. The problem was repaired, and the plane once again headed for Liberia. Meanwhile, Brantley and Wright Bowl remained very seriously ill. Because of the delay with the plane, the medical team at the hospital made the decision to give Brantley one dose of ZMAP. Brantley began to feel better almost immediately. The plane landed in Monrovia on August 2nd. Soon Brantley was in the jet, which took him to Emory University Medical Center in Atlanta, Georgia. A waiting ambulance took him to the hospital. Amazingly, he was able to walk into the hospital under his own power. Brantley received two more doses of ZMAP at Emory. Wright Bull received the remaining two doses of ZMAP in Liberia before the plane returned to carry her to Emory in Atlanta, where she received her third dose. The providential delay of the jet might well have saved the lives of both Brantley and Wright Bull, since that delay caused the missionary doctors in Liberia to make them the first humans to take ZMAP. Over the next three weeks, Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull recovered. They were reunited with their loved ones. In a press conference held when Brantley was released from the hospital, he said, I prayed that God would help me be faithful even in my illness, and I pray that in my life or in my death that he would be glorified. I did not know then, but have learned since, that there were thousands, maybe even millions of people around the world praying for me. He went on to say, I cannot thank you enough for your prayers and your support, but what I can tell you is that I serve a faithful God who answers prayers. Through the care of the Samaritan's Purse and the SIM missionary team in Liberia, the use of an experimental drug, and the expertise and resources of the healthcare team at Emory University Hospital, God saved my life, a direct answer to thousands and thousands of prayers. SIM, by the way, stands for Sudan Interior Mission, which began in 1893 and is now a worldwide mission organization. Before Kent and Amber went to Liberia, they wanted to serve people in a way that would bring others to know God. Kent said that, after all he went through, some days he believed that God was saying, Here is a press conference with 18 million viewers. Here, testify to world leaders. Later that year, the Brantleys met with President Obama at the White House. Time magazine named the Ebola fighters as their Persons of the Year, and Dr. Brantley's picture was on the cover of that issue. Kent and Amber and their children moved to Fort Worth, Texas, where they had lived while Kent was fulfilling his residency requirement. Kent practiced medicine and taught at a hospital that serves the city's poorest residents. Amber worked with a Christian refugee settlement organization and with a group that promotes racial reconciliation among Christians. In 2019, the Brantleys announced that they would be returning to Africa to serve at a 200-bed hospital in the country of Zambia. Kent's cousin, Peter Snell, is a physician there also. After the Brantleys moved to Zambia, they almost immediately had to grapple with another dreaded disease, COVID. But they have endured and continue to serve. 
Since Dr. Brantley's experience with Ebola, scientists have developed vaccines to protect against Ebola. These have been used to help control the spread and severity of outbreaks. Though outbreaks still occur, better care and better treatment options have helped lessen the death toll from Ebola. We discuss the Brantleys and Kent's illness and recovery in more detail in Exploring World Geography, the high school curriculum from Knotgrass. A documentary film about the experience called Facing Darkness is available on several streaming services. When Brantley was asked before they went to Zambia if he feared another outbreak of Ebola, he replied, It's not a matter of not fearing. It's a matter of choosing to have compassion despite fear. We're trusting that God has opened the doors and He'll pave the way. Our calling is to be faithful wherever we are, to be good stewards of opportunities, to be responsible with what we have been given, to try to do good, and to serve those whose paths we cross. Amen. And as you can imagine, Kent and Amber Brantley have become two of my heroes. I'm Ray Notgrass. Thank you for exploring history with me today. This has been Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app, and please leave a rating and review so that we can reach more people with our episodes. If you want to learn about new homeschool resources and opportunities from Notgrass History, you can sign up for our email newsletter at exploringhistorypodcast.com. This program was produced by me, Titus Anderson. Thanks for listening.